Hi, welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace and today we are going to be talking about like kind of like a beginner's guide or a progression guide. When you're finished re-rolling, what exactly should you do? And so to help do that, I'll be referencing Juliwen's guide right here. Juliwen has already put together a re-roll and a progression guide. However, I do think that there is some value for me to add. So before anything, massive shout out to Juliwen. I'm not just going to read off this guide. I'm going to put my own thoughts into it. Like there's a lot of rationale, I guess, like I reckon I can offer. This guide is really really great but I do think that I can help kind of like make it a little bit better provide some context provide some rationale like you know why is this like the thing that we should do and that kind of stuff as well as give it some sort of like structure however before any of this what I am gonna say is the which server am I going on or rather which server should you go on I've been getting this question like crazy and so let's talk about that first first of all what exactly does the server change so here as you can see we have like six servers now I think the only one that really really matters matters is the US. So the US is actually a separate entity from like the global JP, KRC and LATAM. This LATAM server is actually new. It wasn't in the closed beta testing. So that's pretty cool. So then in that case, which server should you pick? Me personally, I probably would go with one of these ones, global JP, KRC or LATAM. And the reason is because it's kind of like all part of the same build. For you guys who are new and like kind of out of the loop, like the US for some reason is being published. I mean, it's kind of published like separately. I do believe it's still the same people, but it's kind of like, you know, on its own. Nobody really knows why, but it's probably like intellectual property issues or something. But like essentially US is not going to be getting Robin from the web gacha event. I don't think they can even like play the web gacha event, but the US Twitter did say that they are going to be trying to get Robin to the US server. So from my perspective, the other five servers, global, JP, whatever, I do believe that these servers are going to be getting equal treatment. I really hope that they're going to be getting equal treatment, but I know that what has happened here is that a lot of people have have actually jumped onto the JP server. As most of us know, JP typically gets like special treatment. So in this case, they're getting like collabs with Niji Sanji. And if there are any like, you know, JP specific collabs, I guess, you know, if you're already on the JP server, it doesn't even matter. And the reason why this is possible is because like it's on the same build. There is no IP block and English is still available on the JP server. So that is probably one of the more compelling reasons as to why you should do that. The other thing is that right now, I believe the global server is located in the EU in Germany. I don't know if that affects anything for you like personally i'm an aussie like an eu server it kind of makes more sense for me to go to a c server or the jp server however the last thing for me is like the support and this is something that probably compels me to like go onto the global server and the reason is because like if you lose your account or like if you're having like purchase issues or something you're going to need to go through support if you're an english speaking player and you don't know japanese and you're on the jp server and then like you lose like your stuff or something or you need some level of help you might actually have to talk to the JP guys because the global guys won't talk to you. And so those are kind of like the reasons that you'd probably be thinking about when you're like choosing a server. To be honest, personally, I'm still tossing up between global and JP. The only reason I'm not like full onto JP, like, you know, ride or die is because I don't really want to lose like the content creation, like a space or aspect for global. I really don't want global to be shafted. I really want to be a voice for global because what I do know is that a lot of the content creators are jumping onto the JP server. I don't want to feel like I'm abandoning it, but like, you know, we'll We'll see we'll see what happens okay so with that being said let's move on so i first want to talk about like your reroll targets not really like your tier list but your targets and so he's got something here generally speaking i do agree with like all of these orders however again i do want to give it a little bit more context so you guys can like understand why these like you know are the way they are or rather just a little bit more information so let's start with like the element one of the most frequently asked questions is which element should i run should i run mono teams should i run this or that so this is what i'm going to tell you now a there is not really a meta formed yet because there's not like a commonly accepted best practice or best element. So B, what this is leading to is this is my opinion and I cannot be sued for this. In CBT2, it was possible to clear the entire game with just a mono water team at Ascension 2-ish. And a massive reason for that is that water is a well-rounded color with the solid foundation, yes. But what exactly does this really mean? They just have like a lot of the utility and a lot of like the characters necessary to make like really good teams. Teams. And so what exactly I mean by that is kind of like, well, like the team compositions, like the characters. So here we have like the general comp. This is all of the different types of characters. And what I'm trying to say is that water has characters that fills every one of these roles like very, very well. What you're going to find for the other elements is that they, they kind of like skewed towards like one or the other. For example, fire right now is DPS oriented. It's pretty hard to find like some of the other ones. Wood or forest or nature or whatever is a little bit different. It's a little bit quirky. 
And Thunder, I believe, is also really good as well. However, they are missing like a couple of like the archetypes. For example, I believe Thunder is missing a two times combo and it's it's pretty good. So generally speaking, you know, all things held constant. If you're looking for the most, I want to say meta comp, then you're looking for water. I think a couple of people actually cleared the entire game with like almost all of the starting units. And the starting units are like predominantly water. So yeah. However, the time it takes for you to clear the game is going to be approximately like one to two weeks, I would say, if you're really like, you know, mad rushing it. And so what that means is that you're not going to be just like locked into a water comp forever. After you finish like the game or like finish routing out your water comp, you're going to be looking to like build other mono teams. By the end of the game, you are going to be having like a mono team for each of the different elements just because of the elemental advantage. So just quickly on that one, the elemental advantage in this game is this one over here. So water beats fire, which beats forest, which beats lightning, which beats water. However, what I really want to talk about is this one over here, which is countering stats deal 120% damage and countered stats deal 80% damage. The reason why this is important is because what I said is that you can like beat the entire game with just a water team. The reason that is possible is because of this, because like the elemental advantages are actually not that massive. And so in my opinion, the right answer for this is to just run a mono comp. It doesn't matter which one, just run a mono one. I actually ran a duo comp in CBT. It was okay. It was like, it was working, but like, I believe for like, you know, kind of the optimal run, just run a mono one. However, what you could consider is an off element captain. And the reason for an off element captain is so that you have a little bit of flexibility. For example, if you're running like an entire water team, you could also tack on like a DPS fire unit. That's actually what I did in CBT. So I actually ran like a full thunder team and then I just ran an extra fire unit. I ran Victoria. And so what that means is that it does give me a little bit of like opportunity to do a little bit more DPS. If for example, like like the tiles are predominantly fire, then I could switch to a water captain and then just run over those tiles and I would get that captain as well as Victoria's help in the attack sequence. So yeah, to summarize comps and elements and all of that, I do believe that water is the best right now. However, I do believe the vision for Tour Dog is that they're going to build all of them as well-rounded elements. Honestly, I reckon water is probably the easiest to play with, but like the rest of them are still good as long as you're just going to be running that like mono team. Off element captain is fine, just like make it like a deep DPS or a healer, preferably a DPS. And I do agree with this statement here. As long as you have like at least two converters, typically you're going to be fine with any of the elements. All right. So then what about the units themselves? So let's have a quick look here. Water, six stars. Yeah, I would say that that is actually a, a really good uh, representation. Unfortunately, I didn't see too much of Bethlehem because she wasn't in CBT2, I don't think. But generally speaking, like this looks pretty good. I guess the big thing about like tier lists in this game, it's like it's very similar to Ark Knights actually. And what I mean by that is is like the archetypes it's kind of like each tier is better than the last and that's kind of it so for example like a six star healer is better than a five star healer generally however the difference between this one and arc knights is that generally as the stars go higher the deployment cost is also more there's typically a downside but like in this game i don't think there's a downside it's just that the higher the stars the better the unit also in regards to the five stars like these ones are pretty good except i just want to mention that five stars are at a 9.5 percent roll rate i do think like given enough time, everybody should be able to get like all of the five star units. But yeah, back to the characters, looking at this one, that one looks pretty good to be honest. He says up here, auto matters a bit and I agree, Raphael definitely should be like the leftmost. She's just like a massively strong healer, probably the best healer in the game to be honest. So just moving on to fire, we have Chiron up top and then Uriel and then Victoria. I think this is a great ranking and I completely agree with Julie Wynn over here. So the abilities of Chiron and like Uriel, they're really good. I think Victoria, the only reason why she's kind of lacking is because there's not too much bleed right now but otherwise like this is looking like a pretty good list to look out for i'm a big fan of this five star over here false he's just a really really good converter he honestly made a lot of things happen for me in cbt2 and like i'd be ecstatic to get him again but generally that looks pretty good so let's move on to forest and the only thing i can say is that this is probably right because i don't see um nikonis so nikonis nikinis i'm not really sure how you say her name like she is a converter i don't know if you guys have seen her before but she is a forest six star and she is absent from this list she just is not really that strong of a unit right now i really do hope that she gets buffed later on like forest just feels like not that great right now but yeah generally speaking like this list looks pretty good all right after that we've got thunder which i am probably like most well versed in something that's interesting i see here is that wrath is actually not in the list i personally thought wrath was pretty good however she is like a solely dps unit instead they included iridan who i do believe like deserves a top spot so like that's pretty good i personally used Iridin like throughout the entire CBT so I do believe that she deserves a top spot. Her skill is 
just like so freaking good and like she's just like in general a really freaking good character so guys again if you have not seen my cbt footage go check it out and that's kind of it for like the tier list so again like take this with a grain of salt it's kind of like you know solid characters that you should look for honestly guys like that's enough to work with like what i just said like a mono team or potentially a mono team with like an off element captain like honestly that is going to be able to get you to the end of the game so honestly i think that really wraps up this section so let's move on to what you do after you have gotten like your target reroll as always guys if you guys like have a waifu or you guys like love a character design honestly i really think if there's any game that you can get away with it it is this game in regards to the whole waifu over meta thing i do think that this game is the one where you can do that like really well all right so let's move on to this one over here so this is what i wanted to show you guys and the reason is because like we're talking from like a progression point of view now after you've re-rolled what exactly should you do so this is my opinion and i think it might be a little bit different to julie wins but like i think that you should rush like all of this i think that you should get to at least three seven because you unlock secret territory as well as the equipment mat farming so equipment mat farming isn't all that important the one i really want to unlock is the secret territory because it is actually going to be forming part of your weekly income and by weekly income i mean like for your rolling currency honestly that alone already warrants like rushing it the rest of it after secret territory i think is fine especially the spire because the spire is like a one-time only thing however it would be nice to actually unlock the spire as well because the spire gives you like a lot of ascension materials okay so with that in mind tldr get up to 3 7 before you do anything else so before i get into julie Wynn's opinions about like progression and stuff i do want to like point out this level of progression over here i want you guys to notice that the stamina cap actually increases like kind of differently it's not really linear it goes from 30 to 40 intervals of 10 up to level 9 and then from level 9 it goes up in intervals of 1 and so what i'm really trying to say here is that you should at least be going for level 9 before you log off hopefully at level 9 use up all of your stamina that's probably like the optimal point to stop and as for gaining xp it's very similar to a lot of other like stamina based games and what i mean by that is that each point of stamina that you use is converted into xp all right let's move on to what julie Wynn's thoughts are on progression so i believe yep it's up here so he says that you should proceed through the main story and follow the quest task which is a given try to use your stamina up as fast as possible which is also a given it's very standard for all gacha games skip the cutscenes they're rewatchable this is a great thing to note actually so we have something a little bit interesting here so he's saying that once you unlock your colossus which is your base upgrading your colossus is a priority over progressing story missions okay this one's interesting because like it's using the same reasoning as i am for unlocking 37 like go as fast as you can to secret territory and the reason is because he wants to get you like generating your resources and stuff like asap so if you guys have played arknights it's a very very similar concept you want to rush your base because you want to be getting that passive income like asap and so so that's why he recommends like you know focusing on the base like as fast as you can so other than that in terms of like leveling up your account an interesting statement he makes is that like there are recharge packs which give 60 prisms which allows you to progress faster and if you're a whale you can recharge prisms if you want so this is a really interesting one because a lot of people in cbt that i know like they're going to be recharging prisms whether they're whales or not and the reason is that they just want to progress faster and you know sometimes there are just like people like that and there is nothing wrong with that however in this game like currently it it is a pve game and the reason why this is so important is because like at this point in time there is no competition so whilst there's going to be a lot of people that are telling you that you should recharge like there is also like nothing really wrong with not recharging so what i'm trying to say is don't feel compelled to actually recharge your stamina in my opinion it is a perfectly fine choice to just like play through and save and hoard until like you find a waifu and then you roll for them the only reason why you would recharge your stamina is if you needed to like rush to get to 37 because you want to get to 37 or you want to rush into like colossus and stuff so you can get all your resources early so yeah these are the reasons that would compel me to actually recharge the stamina otherwise i think i'm just going to be killing and just like progressing without recharging okay so the next paragraph is like something i agree with very strongly and it's that you should level like your team like very evenly and this is a real this is a given guys i know a lot of you are coming from games like arknights and all of that like there is no real like carry in this game you can't just like you know ascension three max level one of the units and expect that unit to carry the entire team a well-rounded team is just like so so important i do think that this is probably one of the most important points i just believe like you know the gains in stats for your entire team is way more important than anything else but yeah like generally i just agree with this statement very strongly absolutely no critique here at all okay so last one down here you can borrow a character from your friend
friend for your fifth spot during mission. So this is kind of like just your like your support. I personally think it's fine to do this. Like you can definitely come back and just three star it later. And the reason is because I have been through a couple of these bosses and it, they are actually quite hard. I had to like really upgrade a couple of my characters to be able to push through these bosses. So this is actually a great tip. However, from this tip, I kind of want to like make another tip and it's that you should add as many friends as possible so that you can do stuff like this. Again, very similar mechanic to Ark Knights. Add as many whales as you can, add as many active people as you can, and then have them assist you when you need them most. I believe every day there is a cap of like 50 friend ads, so just get on it. Honestly, that's a massive limit. All right, next. Oh my God, there's more. Okay, interesting ones here. So you should farm your ascension materials with regular drop rates, which are 100% guaranteed drop. Okay, so this is a really interesting statement because this completely threw me off in closed beta. Regular drop rates, which are 100% guaranteed drop. So it's funny because the stage is going to say regular drop. And when you think of regular drop, you think of like, oh, regular drop, it drops regularly. Like it's pretty common. That's actually not it. It's actually a 100% guaranteed drop. So honestly, that is probably like a pretty big tip. And so he goes on to state like this one over here, which I agree with. Farming the mats instead of progressing the story so you can level and ascend your captain, DPS, healer, or your entire team or whatever early on is okay. But ideally, you should be able to get by with the mats that come from just doing the story missions, quests, rewards, aspire rewards, and later the workshop. So again, this one for the most part, I do agree. However, like I was saying before, especially for these bosses, I had to actually farm a fair bit before I was able to push past them. The big one in this list is the Spire rewards here. So Spire, it actually gives you so much like Ascension materials. The further you can push through Spire, the more stamina you're going to be able to save during Ascension. And so it's for that kind of reason that I would say like, you know, try push to 4-7 or whenever Spire gets unlocked as well. And so he goes on to say most content wasn't that difficult. It could be passed by using only Ascension 2 characters in CBT2 anyway. So that was my experience as well. Okay, that's actually a pretty good progression guide. So I think like, let me summarize this up a little bit. Me personally, I'm saying rush 3-7 and like dump all your stamina ASAP. Get to at least level 9 so you can have that like 100 stamina cap and then make sure that you dump the rest. Like honestly, you should be like way past level 9. Upgrade your Colossus because you get a whole bunch of stuff, different resources. So you get like sometimes you actually get Lumamba, which is your premium currency. You also get like a stamina generation thing. You also get like a deployment system. Like there's so much, there's so much. Just, just do it. Just unlock your Colossus and upgrade it. Just remember that you do need to farm the resource stage a little bit to upgrade your Colossus. After that, in terms of your team, level everyone evenly. Try stick with one team, one mono team to clear the entire game. If you get stuck, borrow friends. On that note, you should like make a lot of friends. And that's kind of it. Try not to farm mats as much as you can, but like it's okay to. I, I, I had to. So now that we've got all of that out of the way, I kind of want to talk about the banners and like, you know, what should we do about that in terms of progression? So we have the first two rate up banners. We have Carleen as well as Uriel. So both of them, as you saw, they were actually present in like his list of people to watch out for. Uriel's here and then Carleen's over here. I personally think that they both deserve those spots. They're both like very, very strong and they're both like exceptionally waifu. So I do think that you cannot go wrong with either of these two. At this point, I think it's a waifu decision or maybe like potentially you could go for like reroll targets of both of them. If you're freaking crazy, that is like, oh my God, I don't even know how long that would take. Honestly, if you get both Carleen and Uriel on a reroll, like freaking DM me. I want to see that, man. But yeah, in terms of reroll targets, I really would recommend that you go for either Carleen or Uriel at least. And the reason is because they are limited and they may not be added to the pool. Hopefully they are. I personally think they will be, but like this is just a great chance to get them. Okay, so that's all I kind of wanted to cover. Oh, actually, there's one more thing I do want to cover. And that is like the whole like four star, three star, five star, six star, whatever dynamic. I don't think Julian mentions it in the guide, but like generally speaking, you want to like save most of your resources for the five and six stars. And the reason is like, and like I was saying before, five stars of the same archetype, for example, healer are a direct upgrade from like four star healers and six star healers are better than five star healers and stuff like that. And the reason that they are better is because like they have better statistics, like they have better stats. If anyone watches like Kirsten V for like Ark Knights, you guys will know like he uses like Melantha and like a lot of like the really good three star units. I'm more hesitant to say that we have those kinds of units in this game. Generally speaking, like a five star statistic statistics are going to be better than a four star statistics. If by the time you've actually finished re-rolling and you've gotten like, you know, a bunch of six stars, a bunch of five stars, but you don't have enough for your team, say like you're missing a slot or something, I would probably like slot in a four star and upgrade them all the way till the end of the game. You could consider like rolling on the banners to get another five star or something, but like, you know, the chances that it's going to be on element as well as the archetype you need, I freaking doubt it. Three stars and four stars are okay to upgrade. However, try to focus on like the six and fives. Honestly, guys, I think that's kind of it for the video like 
<laughs> guys, I've made like four videos on this game like today. I just like cannot wait for this freaking game. And so that being said, I'm going to stop rambling and let's wrap up the video. All right, guys, so I've got a secret question for you guys. If you guys were to reroll, would you be going for Carleen or Uriel? For me, it's Uriel or Die. It's 100% Uriel. Carleen is pretty good, pretty fine, pretty nice, but like it's Uriel for sure for me. So yeah, let me know. Drop it in the comments below and I want to see who wins. But not just that, if you do drop a comment, it does mean that you've made it to the end of the video because this is where I'm asking you to do it. And I'm really grateful for that because I do put a lot of work into these videos. Speaking of a lot of work, a massive shout out again to Julie Wynn for this guide. Like, ugh, I'm not going to say that it wasn't possible without him, but like the stats, the lists, the guide, like all of this really made this video way easier to happen than it could have. It gave me something to reference. Not only that, but it also gave me like a second opinion. Okay, guys, moving on with the ending sequence. If you guys have found this video helpful or kind of enjoyed it or you just kind of liked it, then consider a like, a sub, a comment, a pin. You guys already know what to do. But otherwise, I am so hyped for this game. There are only 12 hours left. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye bye.